Hey guys, this is Paul from Pain Perdu and welcome to the sixth episode of our series, Hidden LSDJ Tips and Tricks. In this episode, we're going to tackle a complex subject, grooves, fantastic grooves and how to use them. Now, I apologize in advance, this might be a little complicated, a little wordy, and this might be a long video. So, in order to streamline that, I have taken notes, I have made an illustrative save file, and I will try to make a timestamp description so that you guys can navigate the video better and find the topics that most interest you. But yeah, bear with me, thanks for sticking out so far. Grooves. In order to fully grasp the concept and the powerfulness of grooves in LSDJ, we need to debunk a little misconception, we need to bust a little myth. Uh, tempo in LSDJ, not tempo itself, but the tempo setting, has nothing to do with BPM. It should, but turns out it doesn't. And when you discover how this works on a technical level, you are free to do whatever you want and it gives you a better control over what you do. It turns out that what actually governs the structure of your song is not the tempo setting. It's grooves. What tempo does is it governs the clock speed and the tick rate. That is to say, um, what is a tick? A tick is the lowest possible unit of time in a given LSDJ project. That is to say, it could be compared to the sample rate or the resolution of your track. Picture, for example, a four-minute hourglass. That would be your song. A four-minute song and a four-minute hourglass. This hourglass would have grains of sand going down at a regular speed, at a constant speed, and these grains of sand would be ticks. Tempo says how fast they will fall, but grooves say... Grooves will say how many of them there will be in each note. In order to demonstrate this, I'm going to play a segment and keep the tempo constant at 255, but change the grooves, and this will allow me to slow down the tempo of the song, the actual BPM, make it faster, and change the feel. Here goes. Here I'm making the songs faster, slower. Here I'm making the song faster, slower. As I was, I'm going to make the song a little swingy. So nothing new. Let's set this back to C, just like it was. Okay, so grooves, what do they do? How do they work? What grooves actually do, according to what we've said, is that they decide the number of ticks per step in either a phrase or a table. The way you use it is with a G command, put in a G command, call the groove of your choice, and set it however you want. The way I do it is for easier navigation, groove 1 is 1 tick, groove 2 is 2 ticks, etc, etc. So that I know that if I'm in groove C, I have C ticks per step. That means that this this is a phrase and these are steps. These are not necessarily 16th notes. This is not necessarily a bar. According to your BPM, this will be a bar only if your groove is 6. If your groove is C, this can be half a bar. If your groove if it, if your groove is 3, it could be two bars. However you want to set it, it could even be one bar and a half with groove 4. But this is a bit complex. Let's see how this work. How this works. As I've said, the master groove of any LSDJ template is six six. What that means is that each step of my phrase will last for six ticks. Okay? So six 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 etc. Speed is constant. With groove five, I could make it be a little faster. Etc. 
Um, another misconception is that you need two numbers. You only need one if you want your b to be constant. So 6 would be still 6 ticks, 6 ticks, 6 ticks. 6, 6 would be the same. 6 and 6 and 6 and 6, like so. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, it actually wraps around. But what you can also do, and that a lot of people don't know about, is that you can add numbers and, and tell LSDJ to govern the speed of each and every step in your track. Now I'm purposefully making this weird groove so that you guys can see. It actually sounds like triplets. Why is that? Because I have 12, 6, 12, 6, 12, 6, 6, 6, 3, 3. So this is two long notes, two short notes, two long notes, two short notes, two long notes, two short notes. For example. And you could actually go completely crazy and put one, six, three, four, F, A, whatever. But this wouldn't be very musical. But if you want to make contem contemporary music and go crazy and make experimental stuff, with grooves you totally can. What I advise to do is to always keep track of your total. Like, for example, this is in groove three, so three ticks per step. Means that my pulse one goes twice as fast as my wave. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But they have the same total in the end because I have four phrases here and four and eight phrases there. So in in the at the end of the day, they still sing together. Like so. Uh, common other common uses of grooves uh, are, as I've said, groove six, in order to have exact sixteenth notes according to your tempo value. Groove three, in order to have thirty second notes and faster phrases. Groove seven five or four eight, as I've shown, in order just to sing because this is a longer note and a shorter note. More swingy. So these are the most common uses for groups. But you could also make triplets if you wanted to. Like, let's go back to 255. Uh, this is in groove C. C means 12. So I have doubled the tempo and I've doubled the groove. So in the end, I'm in the same BPM. And this is in groove 8. So 8 ticks per step. So 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. And what I have is 12 times 16. 12 times 16 semiquavers. And here I have. Eighth note triplets, groove eight. Um, so divide 12 by 3, that makes 4, and multiply by 2, that makes 8. You also notice that here I have a hop command, because in a ternary bar there are not there aren't 16 notes, there are 12, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And here is where it hops. So this is exactly as long as... this. It's 
stays in sync. Uh, what I haven't told you guys is that grooves also work in tables. For example, here I have I have a table with an ARP. And I have a groove command in there. By default, tables run a tick, one tick per step. This is a bit too fast for me, so what I'm going to do is put it in groove 2, which is set to be 2 ticks per step. So this is 1 tick per step. And let's make it twice as slow. Or even slower. That means that if you want to have, if you want to control the speed of tables, thanks to grooves you can. Shoutouts to Joe Tai from Chiptune Belgium for showing me that tricks. I've I had been using this old trick to make tables, to make art tables slower. This is what I used to do, and if I wanted to make a long arp that actually took two tables to make, that was a bit of a hassle. But thanks thanks to that trick, I can now use half the space and control exactly how fast my tables go. This is useful also for percussion, for example, because if you have a faster groove, if you have a faster groove, then you can add a lot more commands in a table in a shorter period of time. So this this allows for greater control, and this is something I use a lot in percussion to give it timbral effects. Um, what you need to know is that groove is channel independent. This is really important. As I've said, I can have this in groove C, but I could have this in a special groove too. Let's use another example. Um, this is all in groove C. 12 ticks per step, but because I want an ARP here, and I'm not using a table for this one for visibility purposes, I have groove 3 here. So I, I could have 6, I could have 12, and I could have 3, and as long as I keep my totals, 4 phrases, 16 phrases. This all sinks together. Look how fast this is going. The advantage is that you have more phrases than you have tables. So if you're like me and you overuse tables for ARPs, using grooves and phrases might be a better idea. As I've said, you can do triplets and this can also help you make cool, cool grooves. This is internary. And this is in binary. In my opinion, this gives you far finer control than if you don't use grooves and only use tables. Which is still a very valid method. But in my opinion, harnessing the power of grooves is the key to 
a lot more control over whatever you do. So we've seen better resolution, we've seen ARPs and phrases, we've seen triplets. And there are other things that grooves and tick speed affect that you need to be aware of. One of these things is the speed of wave cycles in wave instruments. For example, remember in my wave wave channel videos, I had said that the speed setting of a wave instrument was measured in ticks. Well, this is true. If you're in 255, then the ticks will be a lot shorter, and this will allow for very fast moving waves. But this is also important if you want to time your wave cycles with your with your beats. For example, here I'm in groove C, which means I have C ticks per step. If I put the speed to C, it goes exactly as fast as my 16th notes. Uh, but this means I can have better control if my tempo is faster. Conversely, uh, we can do exactly the same in a different group in a different tempo, but be careful. C no longer works here. We need to go back to six because my group is six. But how that is useful is that with double tempo, you will have um, a finer range of control over exactly how fast you want your wave to, cy to cycle. Now, the only downside I've seen with upping the tempo and using longer grooves is that it caps your tempo to 255, which is the double of... Uh, 127.5. So if you want to use groove C, your maximum tempo would be this. But once again, uh, you're not tied to this. If you want to have the fastest groove possible, uh, so the fastest ticks possible, which means 255, and have your tempo go over. 128, you just have to set your grooves accordingly. Here. Not exactly the same level of controls because I have less ticks per steps and calculations are not the same because now I have 10. But still, I mean, I can go over the tempo cap and still have a lot more control than in Groove 6. So this is useful, in my opinion. Um, another thing that tick speed governs, and that you should be aware of, is D commands and R commands. If I'm in 125, Groove 6, so standard tempo, standard groove. And I use D commands. I can use this to swing just in one just in one phrase. What D commands do is they delay a given note by X ticks. So D2 will delay this note by two ticks, as opposed to this. I can actually swing it. But what if I'm not exactly satisfied with the speed of my swing? This is not, not enough, and this is too much. Let's say this is the case. Well, what I can do is double the tempo, or make it however faster you want, use a longer groove, 
and then I will have twice as much control. Double resolution, so to speak. So this is without any swing. And now I can adjust exactly how I want. Barely perceptible, but still groovy. This is nice, but still not enough. This is too much. And this is exactly what I want. Well, this exact setting would be inaccessible in Groove 6, because delay by one tick in Groove 6 would be exactly like delaying by two ticks in Groove C. I hope this is clear. If it's not, I apologize. And the other command that is governed by tick length is R. What R does, let's do the exact same thing. What R does is, is it takes a note and R re-triggers it by X ticks, zero being one, so be careful with your count. So if you want makeshift triplets and you don't want to like cut your phrases into two and use a custom groove, you can always use the R command. I mean, it is useful if you want to like optimize. Etc, etc. But what if I want more control over this? What if this is too fast? But this is not, not fast enough. What I can do is the same, double the tempo and use an R command and I will have double the resolution because ticks will be shorter. Oh, and it becomes so fast that you can actually use timbral effects on noise instruments if you want. Cool trick. Etc. Etc. So more control over whatever you do, in my opinion. Now, I think I have covered kind of everything I wanted to cover. I hope this was clear enough for you guys. Um, I'm going to show you a little palette of what I do with grooves. So as, as you've said, as, you, as you've seen, I can have parts, finer percussion tables. I can have arps that go at different speeds. Ternary and binary. I can have triplets. have basically whatever control I want over the speed of anything. And now the little surprise I wanted to show you guys is that thanks to Grooves and also thanks to Acolex who showed me this wonderful technique, super powerful, I can actually give the illusion of layering two melodies into one, so to speak. I'm not going to show you exactly how I did it, because this trick is, first off, not mine to give away. And secondly, because I want you guys to try and figure it out for yourself. It'll, it'll be a good exercise, and um, according to all that I've said today, I'm sure you will have the clues, the necessary clues to to find out how I did it. I'm going to play this sequence, and you will find that these two pulses sounds like sound like they have a lot more going on. Now 
Now, if we pay attention, this is a standard ARP. It's already pretty full. It sounds pretty full already. And this is what's most interesting. So I have a staccato layered onto um, a lead, and I will challenge you guys to try and figure out how I did this. It's not that complicated, especially if you've now hopefully grasped how powerful grooves can be and how to harness them, which is the aim of this video, basically. And basically what I try to do, because I still can't bring myself to use 2LSDJ, it's too complicated for me, there's too much room for sound design, and there's too much to consider. But this, in turn, um, challenges me to find crazy tricks and, and try to cram as much information as possible into one channel. And this is exactly what I've managed to do thanks to Aqualex and his wonderful two pulses in one trick. Now, this might not exactly be what you're looking for, and you might want to do things differently, but this is how I work, and this is what I'm trying to show you guys. Ways of pushing limitations and bending the chip to your will. I think that's most of the fun of writing music with Game Boys is this. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're having more fun thanks to my videos, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Please react in the comments if you've appreciated this video. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Tell us what you've liked, tell us what you haven't understood. Don't hesitate to comment and I will rescue you. I will come to your rescue. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Pain Perdu and I will be I will always be glad to point you in the right direction and help you find what you need. Thanks for watching and see you next time.